Okay, so as we can see here, this question is about the S block metal. So I've, I've chucked this nice periodic table of the S block here for us. So it'll help us in later questions. Let's go straight into this. So question 4.1 then, give the full electron configuration of the calcium ion. Okay then, so this is the method that I always use. Sometimes it can screw you over, so maybe you don't want to use it. But for these, um, when it's not dealing with transition metals, it can be quite useful. So what I like to do is I like to lay them out like this. So 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, uh, 4s, 4p, 4d. Now you've probably seen this method before. I don't know, maybe your teacher showed it to you. But what you do is you actually do a downward to the left diagonal arrow, and that will determine which electrons are gained and which electrons are lost in that order. Hopefully this makes sense. So first one, obviously we just cross off the 1s, and then we cross off the 2s. So this is the order that the electrons are gained as well as lost, all right? So obviously if you're losing them, you just go boop in the opposite direction. All right, so next one, 2p, 3s. Next one's 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, and so on. Okay, so what we can do is normally I recommend just writing out the full electron configuration of the atom, so our calcium zero oxidation state atom, and then you would just knock off two electrons as needed. If you struggle with this topic, if you find this topic easy, you can just jump straight into drawing the two plus ion electron configuration. So what I'm gonna do here then is look at our periodic table. Calcium just circled it. 20 electrons, okay? So all we have to do is add these up. So let's write out our electron config for calcium atom up here. So it's gonna be 20 electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. As you can see, we're following this pattern here. Next one is 3s, all right? 3s2, 3p6, um, and then it's gonna be 4s, isn't it? So that's gonna be 4s2. Okay, so that's our 20 electrons in total. All we have to do here is knock off two electrons. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Makes it pretty, pretty simple. Yeah, at least I think so. Uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. Now, we don't want the 4s2. We just kick them off. So simple as that, okay? So that would be our first mark right there. Mark on the board. Next question then. So explain why the second ionization energy of calcium is lower than the second ionization energy of potassium. All right then, so what I'm gonna do here is if we compare calcium and potassium, okay, so calcium has 20 electrons, potassium has 19, but we're not focused on the atoms, we're focused on the one plus ions. The reason for that is because what is the second ionization energy? The second ionization energy is going from, let's just use potassium as the example, it's going from one plus ion to a two plus ion, okay? We can do the same thing with calcium right here. Uh, calcium two plus. So that's what our second ionization energy is. So we're focused on starting with the one plus ion. So what I'm going to do is, this is our one plus uh, calcium right here, and I'm gonna draw out the electron configuration of our one plus potassium, just to explain this to you. So 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and then that would be it. Okay, so that would be our potassium. Um, so how can we explain this then? So essentially we want to think of what's occurring here. So oh, I'm running out of space, but if we have our central nucleus, this is a super crude diagram, but hopefully you get the point. Um, if our potassium ion is like this, okay, but just picture this as the outer shell. Now, if this is the um, 3p orbital, so this I'm gonna label this as 3p, and then beyond that, we've got our 4s, okay? So our calcium ion is gonna be, this is our outer electron. Okay, that's our calcium one plus. However, with our potassium one plus, it only goes to here because we've got 18 electrons rather than 19. Um, and we're dropping down to the lower orbital level of 3p rather than 4s. So hopefully you're following me here, but maybe once I write it out for you, um, it'll make a bit more sense. So um, calcium ion, calcium one plus, remember, because of this whole situation, calcium uh, outer electron, alternatively you could write valence electron, that's fine as well, um, is in 4s orbital, okay, whereas the potassium ion, potassium ion outer electron, is in the 3p orbital. Cheeky three dots, save us some time, um, calcium ion 
um, calcium outer electron, sorry, outer electron. Now, this is other key terminology here. So the outer electron is further away from the nucleus, okay? And if it's further away from the nucleus, it therefore has more shielding occurring because this guy, this big chunky guy here is in the way. So we've got more shielding, therefore less nuclear attraction to the outer electron. So it's more easily lost, okay? Um, which is in the question here. Why is it lower? That's the reason why. Um, so calcium outer electron is further away from nucleus. If you don't want to hear my rambling, you can just forward the video to when the question's finished. Um, further from the nucleus and thus has more shielding than potassium. All right, more shielding. God, this is handwriting than potassium. All right, that's our two marks right there. Boop, boop, okay. Um, right, 4.3 then. So identify the S block metal that has the highest first ionization energy. All right, so, oh, year one topic here. I think it's a year one topic anyway. Um, so I always found this so boring, remembering all the trends, but it has to be done, all right? So what's happening here? So um, if we think about what's happening, so if we cast our eyes to the periodic table, we have to say the ionization energy, what is the highest? So if you don't know, going down the group, the ionization energy decreases, okay? And the reason for this um, is due to increased shielding, okay? Due to, I'm not gonna bother writing out, you get the idea, <laughs> due to increased shielding. Okay, now group two, if we're comparing, so what are we comparing here? So obviously it's gonna be one of these two. If our ionization energy decreases down the groups, it has to be one of the top two, but is it lithium or is it beryllium? Now pause the video, have a go, see what you think. Um, right, so I'm gonna explain it now. So group two naturally has more protons because as we go from group one, boop, gaining a proton. All right, now if it has a extra proton, it's going to have a greater nuclear charge. Therefore, the attraction between the nucleus and the outer electron is greater. Okay, so between these two guys, beryllium is gonna be our highest. Okay, and that's just because like I explained, group two has more protons, therefore has a greater nuclear charge. Okay, just try and remember that trend. Okay, 4.4 then. Give the formula of the hydroxide of the element in group two from magnesium to barium that is least soluble. All right, so we've sort of forgotten about beryllium here. We're only concerned with magnesium to barium. Um, I suppose if you didn't read the question carefully, you'd be like, I know that the solubility increases, therefore it's beryllium. But yeah, they, they don't care about beryllium anymore. They want magnesium, so yeah. Basically, as we go down group two, the solubility increases. Okay, so it's a group two metal topic. So our answer here is just gonna be magnesium. Magnesium, all right. So 4.5 then, um, got a nice calculation going on. So a student added six centimeters cubed of 0.25 mole per decimeter cube barium chloride um, to eight centimeters cubed of 0.15 mole per decimeter cubed sodium sulfate solution. Um, the student filtered off the precipitate and collected the filtrate. Give an ionic equation for the formation of the precipitate. Show by calculation which reagent is in excess. So we have to show by calculation. Oh, that was a shambles of a line. Show by calculation what's in excess. Keep all right, calculate the total volume of the other reagent which should be used by the student so that the filtrate contains only one solute. Okay, so what's our ionic equation here? So if you're not too great with ionic equations, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna write out the full balanced equation between our barium chloride and our sodium sulfate, and then we're going to cancel out the spectator ions so you can see exactly how it's done. All right, so hopefully that makes things a bit easier for you. So what have we got here? Then we've got barium chloride. So I'm gonna write that out. So if we write that out, barium chloride. Now we're missing something here. Barium, where is barium, barium, barium? It's group two, therefore it's a two plus. All right, chloride, this is a group seven, so it's a halogen, so it's a one minus. So what we have to do to balance the charge, just stick a two on there. Hopefully at this point, you should just have memorized the group two chlorines is always um, two chlorines involved. Um, so we're gonna add that to our, what are we adding? Sodium sulfate. 
This is another ion you should remember. So if we've got our sulfate, I'm going to draw that first. A sulfate ion is always 2 minus. Okay, the reason for that is because our sulfur has a plus 6 oxidation state. Whereas we've got a sodium here, sodium metal, group 1. Okay, so that's a plus 1 oxidation state. So we have to double this up just to balance the charges up. Alright, so that's going to be our reactants sorted. Now let's do our products. It's going to give us barium sulfate. Sulfate, like I said, is 2 minus. Barium is 2 plus, so we don't have to, we don't have to double or, or anything like that. Um, then what's our other product is going to be sodium chloride, so NaCl. Now, I'm going to have to balance up the sodiums here because there's two over here, one over here, so I'm going to chuck a two in front of there, and that also balances our chlorines, uh, our chloride ions, I should say. So what's happening here is we have to cancel our spectator ions. So on this side, we have two chloride ions. Okay, Within this, this is an ionic compound, so you have to think of it as two lots of chloride ions. All right, this is going to cancel. Okay, let's change our color to make it a bit more visible. This is going to cancel. Um, and then on this side, we have our sodium. So you can think of two lots of sodium plus. On the other side, we have two lots of sodium plus and two lots of Cl minus. So you can see here that these are present on both sides of the reaction. Boop, boop, boop. So we can cancel those both out. So if we were to write our ionic equation, it's just simply going to be our barium 2 plus, plus, forget about the chlorines, forget about the sodium, plus sulfate 2 minus, gives us barium sulfate. Okay, now obviously you don't want to cancel this because that's our product, so we can't just be like, this gives us nothing. So yeah, you don't want to cancel out something if it's a compound, all right? But we cancel out spectator ions on both sides. All right then, so reagent in excess this is where we have to do some sort of calculation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this space for our calculations and then answer the questions after. Okay, so whenever, whenever, whenever you see two variables given like this, this is a volume, this is a concentration, the first thing you should think straight away is molar equation. Okay, so our molar equation is simply N equals CV. All right, learn this off by heart. It's in my um, all the equations you need to know for amount of substance calculations, or you, sh you should just know it really, let's be honest. Um, so uh, what we can do then is the moles of barium ions. Now there's one mole of barium ions within one mole of barium chloride, so we can just leave it like that. All right, so that's just going to be our concentration, so 0.25, multiplied by our volume, which is six centimeters cubed. Now this is moles per decimeter cubed, so we're simply going to have to convert centimeters into decimeters. So all you have to do is divide by a thousand, which is the same thing as times ten to minus three. Okay. Next up, our moles of our sulfate. Then now the sulfate again, one mole of sulfate ions per one mole of barium sulfate. So we can leave it as it is. So that's going to be zero point one five times by eight. All right, we've got eight, vol eight centimeters cubed, so we're going to have to times that by 10 to the minus 3 again to get it into decimeters cubed. Hopefully, this is just um, autopilot for you now, converting centimeters into decimeters. So when we plug these into our calculator, then it should give us 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 mole and 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 mole. Okay, now... If we look at this, we have to, what did they ask us in the question? Show by calculation which is an excess. So we, all I'm going to do is just leave a little closing statement here. So all you have to do to determine which is an excess is just compare the number of moles. So you would say 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 is greater than 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3. Therefore, barium um, now, reagent is very important. They asked us which reagent is in excess. So if you put barium plus is in excess, that's an ion, okay? It's not a reagent. So you would have to say barium chloride is in excess. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, that's where I would put my answer here. Put it up here, barium chloride. Now, Calculate the total volume of the other reagent which should be used by the student so that the filtrate contains only one solute. So when we're working this out, okay, all you have to do is compare the molar ratios. So if we look at this equation right here between barium and sulfate, what is our molar ratio? Simply one to one, okay, so one to one. Therefore, these moles should be exactly the same. 
for it to be a complete reaction. So none of the reagents are in excess and none, none of them are limiting. They're both equal. They're in a one-to-one -one ratio. So what do we have to do to get this number of moles to 1.5? Um, and what are they asking for? Which variable? Um, the volume. All right, so which volume do we need to add? So all you would do is how do we get to how do we get this to 1.5? It's just times it by 10. So I can just see that straight away, but maybe you'd have to do a bit of calculations. But hopefully you can just spot that there that we have to times this by 10 times 10 to the minus 3 to get to 1.5. All right, so that would be 10 centimeters cubed. All right, so I thought I'd end the video with looking at the mark scheme and the examiner's report. Um, I've been adding this to my videos recently. Hopefully it's useful for you guys. Um, so I'm not going to bother with this guy because 88.9% got it correct. So obviously you find it quite easy. Um, 4.2. Only the best students gain both marks. 19%. Poor. Um, many students focus on whether the electron was being removed from a full or partially full orbital instead of considering why the attraction between the nucleus and the outer electron might be different. All right, so for this one, I just remember visualizing it like this. Even though this is like a super simple GCSE model, um, it really helps just understand it, of what's happening here. There's this fat orbital is in the way and it's blocking this right here, okay? That's how it works. If you remember like remember it like that, you should be able to word it accordingly, okay? So the outer electron is further from the nucleus. We can see that in the diagram and we can see that there's more shielding. So hopefully if you remember the diagram, you should be able to, okay, to explain it. And 19%, I'm not sure why people struggle with that so much. I suppose it's just such a boring topic, they can't be asked to revise it. <laughs> so next one then. Um, 4.3, less than half of the students, 39.5 um, could give the correct answer here. All right, so lithium was incorrect. Lithium was the common one. So I suppose they remembered that the ionization energy decreases. However, they didn't remember that this has an extra proton. Therefore, it's attraction um is higher okay so it's going to have a higher ionization energy right what's next then um i'm going to skip 4.4 because most people got that all right ah what did it ask it did i do it wrong give the form of the hydro ah shocking mate all right so should have put that there yeah, my mistake, my mistake. Moving on, swiftly moving on. 4.5, the ionic equation was generally correct and many students could also calculate um, that barium chloride was an excess. Okay. Uh, just under a third of students managed to score all three marks. Um, so it's, I don't know which marks they got wrong. Um, maybe it was the final one that people got a bit confused with. Um, but yeah, it's it, group two, um, not the most fun topic, as I said, but hopefully this video has helped you. Made an absolute shambles of this question. So yeah, make sure you read the question properly. Don't make my mistake. Best of luck, guys, in your exams. Peace.